Thank you for joining us back here on the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. We have a couple more topics to get to before we wrap up the show today, starting with the Steelers general manager, Omar Khan, talking to the media yesterday on various topics, training camp starting for the Steelers recently. They had their first practice yesterday. They just wrapped up the second one today. And there's a lot of things that is on people's minds in regards to the Steelers. You have the quarterback battle the Najee Harris situation on a contract year for him. Same thing with Pat Fryermuth. Same thing with Cam Hayward as well. And also the ongoing trade rumors around the wide receiver position for the Steelers. A lot of people thinking that needs work on. A lot of unproven talent there in some people's minds. And Brandon Ayuk has been heavily linked a lot with the Steelers. He mentioned that It would be a team that he could see himself playing in if it wasn't the 49ers or it wasn't the Washington Commanders. So people likely are screaming uh, for the Steelers to do something about that, offer the 49ers a trade. And Omar Khan addressed those two topics. I picked them out thinking that those were the main ones that um, carried a lot of weight in terms of the Steelers and how it could affect them going forward. Starting off with Cam Hayward, the situation around him, he's looking for a new deal. Uh, with the Pittsburgh Steelers, why it says why he was away from the team this offseason. He was here and there a couple times, didn't show up to a, a couple of the voluntary practices, but for the most part, it wasn't something to write home about or say that he was holding out. He was just in and out um, over a new contract that he is trying to get with the Pittsburgh Steelers because um, because of the fact that Pittsburgh doesn't do contract negotiations during the season. It's just sort of like an in-house rule for them, for the organization that they've been doing for a while now. This needs to happen ideally in the next month, month and a half, for it to have any chance of getting done before the regular season. And that's, we are ramping up the pressure now a little bit because not only do you have Cam, but you have Najee and Pat Fryermuth that you could extend, but he isn't on the last year just yet. But with Cam Hayward and talking about this, you know, a legend, a veteran, a leader for this team. I don't think anybody wants to see Cam Hayward go. He's coming off of a rough year, but albeit that, even if he is a little bit older, the amount that he brings you, the amount of benefits that Cam Hayward brings you, I think would be something hard for the Steelers to let go. And yesterday at the media session, Omar Khan touched on it and he said on Cam Hayward's extension and just his future overall. He said that last year, you know, we had a rough stretch there, but I'm confident the way he works. And, you know, Cam, the person, the player, obviously, and I have no doubt that Cam has a lot of football. I think Cam has a lot of football left in him, and I expect him to be here for years to come. So pretty encouraging words there from Omar Khan, but the actions don't really support it as of yet. You know, we haven't seen anything progress too much. Cam Hayward hasn't been too optimistic, I would say is the word, just because from the most part, all I've seen Cam say is that it's basically out of his hands. You know, he's not getting his hopes too high just because it's not something that he can control. So the Steelers might have a change of heart someday and decide that maybe this isn't the best option or they might decide that this is the best option and extend Cam and that way, you know, He doesn't get too attached for the Steelers, which is hard because this is where he was drafted and everything like that. But he's keeping his options open, keeping an open mind, because it could be a reality that he could face in 2025. Um, Having to play for a new team, which would be gross. It would be gross just seeing him in a different uniform. But um, that's where he stands. He says he wants to play three more years. Um, So how the Steelers work out a deal for an older defensive lineman already making around 16 to $14 million per year. How they structure it, how much guaranteed money there is, and just the length of it as well will be something to follow. But it is encouraging what Omar Khan has in store, it seems, what he has in terms of a plan. But we'll see how much that progresses now that we're in training camp. Cam Hayward's not holding out or anything, so he is there. The biggest thing with him is going to be the health because last year he was injured a lot. And it caused him to miss a lot of time. He didn't really pick up any traction or any momentum at any point of the season. So if he stays healthy, I think that'll only help his case tremendously. And from that point on, it'll help him get that contract to stay with the Pittsburgh Steelers. But we'll see where it goes from then. And then also Omar Khan talked about the wide receiver room. 
which right now includes George Pickens, Calvin Austin, Van Jefferson, Quez Watkins, Roman Wilson, and Scotty Miller. In all honesty, I don't expect you guys to know maybe more than two names on that list, George Pickens and Quez Watkins or Van Jefferson. Um, and that's where the Steelers are right now with this room. It's an area where a lot of people have pointed out that the Steelers could definitely improve upon. There's been rumors linking them to Debo Samuel, Cortland Sutton. Obviously, Brandon Ayuk is the biggest one because of the situation he faces now with the 49ers. It's been constantly linked. He's been constantly linked to the Steelers since he became an option. But personally, I've always had my doubts about it. It would seem like a dream scenario, but in terms of the money that you have to pay Brandon, uh, $30 million per year, and the length of a contract is another thing, how he fits in with the Steelers, and what you'd have to give up to the 49ers to, to make this anywhere near possible, it seems like too steep of a hill for the Steelers to for the Steelers to climb at this point, whereas I feel like if they desperately needed to make any changes to this wide receiver room, I feel like they would have done it. But Omar Khan also spoke about this, and he seemed more hopeful for this group. He said, there's nothing going on right now. If there's, any, if there's an opportunity to upgrade whatever the room is, we're going to look at it, but I feel good about that room we have right now. So... He's not saying no, but he's not overly eager to try and improve it. So I believe that with all the hurdles that they have to jump over and just how this is all turned out right now, with the stance that the 49ers are taking also, I don't really see this being an avenue that the Steelers could go down, honestly. It's, it's just too much right now for the Steelers, I think, because they've already added a lot. They've addressed their offensive line. They brought in two new quarterbacks. They brought in Patrick Queen. They're adding a lot to the rest of their team, Dante Jackson also, and the quarterback position. They've added a lot already, um, and I just don't think they're at a spot where they have an excess of riches right now where they could uh, decide to go out and throw the house at the 49ers to try and get Brandon Ayuk on their team. Yes, they need it, and that would be a dream scenario, but I don't see it being a case where they have enough, honestly, just to give it over to the 49ers. And yeah, at that point, if you decide to move on from Brandon Ayuk, at that point, I wouldn't even bother bringing in anybody else because the level of available receivers right now, I think you're better off just keeping this group that you have in Van Jefferson, Calvin Austin, and uh, Roman Wilson, George Pickens, obviously. Because of how this offense looks, not too dependent on the pass, but more so the run, I think you can get by. If you're not going to bring in someone to the level of Brandon Ayuk, I don't see the benefit in still using resources to get another wide receiver that is probably closer to the level of the receivers you already have on your team. So it's not an avenue I would explore if you can't get Brandon Ayuk. That's just how I feel. But in terms of Cam, to just wrap up this segment and going back to Cam Hayward, it seems like if any deal was to get done, between Cam or Najee Harris, I think it would be Cam Hayward uh, just because of what he means to the team. He's obviously super close and seen as a veteran and OG to everybody in that locker room. And with Najee, he is a running back. He, I hate holding that against him, but it is the landscape of where the running back position is at this point. And it doesn't help that they have Jalen Warren there also. They have a great one-two punch, but I think like most teams do, would feel that they could find another Jalen Warren in the draft or just find another one on the free agent market next offseason or something like that. It's not fair. I don't like using that, but I think that's how the Steelers are kind of approaching this right now with Cam. If he stays healthy and he has a good training camp, he looks refreshed, he looks ready to produce this year, I see him as the most likely contract extension to get done. And right now, if they were to lose Cam Hayward honestly, and keep Najee Harris, I think that would be a bigger blow if instead they lost Najee and kept Cam um, for, for those same reasons that I just laid out. You still have Jalen Warren. You still have players that you could add at that position that doesn't really change it too much uh, because it is such a dependent position on the offensive line and the scheme. Um, they are supposed to do a lot. They are responsible for doing a lot to make the offense successful. But if you lost Cam Hayward sooner, uh, you don't have a replacement for him. You don't have somebody to produce right away at that level. They really like 
their second year player Keanu Benton, but to say that he's at the level of Cam Hayward right now, to expect him to make that jump isn't fair on him. So realistically, the Steelers would be worse off without Cam Hayward. So that's why I believe that'll be a deal that gets done first before anything else. If a deal was to get done before the start of the regular season. And in terms of the wide receiver room, we're not erasing all hope, but I'm not getting my hopes up too much on the Steelers adding another wide receiver or adding um, trading for Brandon Ayuk at this point. The 49ers don't have to trade him. They want to keep him. They want to continue to work something out. And if that, if all those hurdles are stacked right in front of you, it doesn't look too likely. But with Omar Khan, you don't honestly know. When he became the general manager, I didn't know what to expect too much. And he has proven to be overly aggressive to jump on opportunities. So whatever happens... I'm going to say I'm surprised or I'm going to say I expect it, but it could go really either way with Omar Khan. And I really like that about him. I think the Steelers needed that sort of proactive change to their organization. So we'll see. They have a lot of things still left on their to-do list. We'll see which one they decide to cross off first as we head deeper and deeper into the offseason. But we're going to wrap up with that segment. We have one more to talk about on today's show. J.K. Dobbins, I think he's going to be a crucial piece for the Los Angeles Chargers in 2024 we're going to debate whether he's going to be more crucial to the success of the Chargers or is it going to be a wide receiver that they still have to find to be that elite option for Justin Herbert which one is going to be more crucial this year in Jim Harbaugh's first year stay tuned to find out the answer after this short break <laughs> 